From Siri on your phone to bots like ChatGPT, artificial intelligence is playing a role in a growing number of areas of our lives, but some medical researchers have higher hopes for the technology, and one Vancouver lab is using it to develop drugs that they hope will lead to some crucial breakthroughs, including cancer treatments. Well, Fox 12's Carly Olson got the chance to visit Absi. She joins us live in the studio with that story. That's right, Pete and Riel. The method of developing medications through artificial intelligence only came onto the scene a few years ago, but since then, the results have spoken for themselves. And those working in the lab, all the way up to top cancer doctors, can't deny its potential for the future of medicine. Take a look. We really see this technology as, as revolutionizing the way that uh, drugs are, are created for, for patients. We suit up to explore the inner workings of Absi, a lab in Vancouver that Sean McLean originally started for the purpose of using E. coli to produce new antibody-based drugs. The reason why we wanted to do this was to ultimately reduce the, the biomanufacturing costs and reduce the, the time it took to get these uh, cutting-edge therapies to, to patients. But in recent years, artificial intelligence introduced a way to speed up that process, and Absi jumped at the chance. I am sure that uh, you know you and, and others have heard of uh, ChatGPT, these large language uh, models that are essentially trained on on the whole internet and and are able to do uh, you know really interesting uh, new new novel tasks. And we're essentially taking that same concept. Uh, and applying it to, to drugs. The lab feeds millions of data points into artificial intelligence models, which the models then use to produce new drugs for certain diseases. Essentially think of it, instead of searching for a needle in the haystack, you're actually creating the needle, in our case, the, the drug of, of interest. This takes years off of the guessing game of the normal development process. Normally it takes five and a half years to, to get a drug into clinical trials. We're able to, to show with, our, with the lead drug that we have for, for IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, that we can get a drug uh, into the clinic or into clinical trials within 24 months. Time is money, and all that saved time lowers the cost of getting a drug to clinical trials from between 50 and 100 million dollars to between 13 and 15 million. I think as a scientist who's been doing both lab-based and clinical research for 40 years, I thought that was over the top. Dr. Bernard Fox is the Harder Family Chair for Cancer Research and the Chief of Molecular and Tumor Immunology at the Providence Cancer Institute. These are actually human cancer cells. The hype around AI drug development made him feel skeptical until he read a research paper last summer detailing findings from a lab that used AI to discover how T cells can recognize not just one, but multiple forms of cancer in a patient. But they had used AI to predict that and of how the structure of interactions are between a T cell and what they see. So that really rocked my world in terms of thinking, that's incredible. How, that's something we, we never would have really envisioned. Since then, he's become an advocate for the method, hopeful for what the future could bring. A lot of the drug development that's out there is guessing. People are, are trying to figure out um, what is the right next thing they need to do. Now you don't have to guess so much. Now you can go ahead and design it, play with it, see how it interacts and, and move it forward. The speed and effectiveness of the method has prompted manufacturers to reach out to Absi for help developing drugs for things like skin diseases and irritable bowel syndrome. And most recently, Absi partnered with AstraZeneca to develop a drug to treat cancer. McLean believes within the next decade, it will be used to narrow down the right drug for the right patient faster and potentially save lives. We're gonna be able to develop drugs cheap enough for an individual and you're going to be able to ultimately, I believe in the next eight to 10 years, take a patient sample, find out the target that's relevant for that disease, and then design a drug that treats that disease for that given patient. And that includes cancer patients. And move them into patients, the right patient, um, at the right time, right? Not to wait until their cancer's more progressed because they've failed other drugs that aren't going to work. Give them the right drug the first time. The American Association for Cancer Research just wrapped up its annual meeting in San Diego today, and multiple drug development companies presented their findings in the search for new cancer drugs using artificial intelligence programs. Reporting live in the studio, Carly Olson, Fox 12 Oregon.